HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will get you up to date with the Hillers playoff teams. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus a whole lot more. But first, Ashley Olofsson dropped by to talk about a couple of upcoming programs. Tom Nappy here with Ashley Olofsson. Ashley, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. <laughs> And I, we know you through the MOVE program uh, that you put on every summer. For those that don't know, why don't you uh, talk about what the MOVE program is all about? Totally. So the MOVE summer program is a summer program for girls who are currently in 6th grade through ninth grade. And at my five-day summer program hosted at St. John's, we work with girls on topics like body image, self-esteem, mental health, relationship pressures, um, and leadership, and much more. Terrific. And you have a, a new program coming up um, Saturday at the library. Yes. Uh, why don't you tell us about the program that's coming up this Saturday? Totally. So since I've been doing MOVE, which has been for the past six years, I've always gotten the same question from parents, which is, what about us? And for the first time ever, I'm going to be giving a workshop for parents called Bridging the Gap Between Parents and Teen Daughters, How to Help Girls Navigate. And the whole hour and a half long workshop is just going to be me sharing with parents what I've learned from girls about how parents can support their daughter's body image, mental health, relationships, friendship drama, all that good stuff. So it'll be hosted at Hopkins Public Library this upcoming Saturday from 2 to 3.30 p.m. with a full Q&A and everything. Terrific. And uh, what led to the idea for this program? Um, parents have always just been asking me, and I, I was always hesitant to give a workshop to parents because I always thought, I'm not a parent, it would be inappropriate for me to be offering parenting advice, which I still believe. But what I can do is share with parents the wealth of knowledge that I have on young women and really kind of serve as a translator to parents on how girls may be viewing things like social media and body image. So I'm really excited because I love, you know, working with girls and I'm really excited to share with their parents um, in a really, I think, informative way what's actually going on and help parents support their daughters. So. Well, you've done yeah. great work in the community. Thank you. Uh, where can people find more information about all the programs you have going on? Totally. www.ashleyolafson.com. And we also have a Facebook event going for the parent workshop. And, um, yeah, the library has been posting about it as well. Terrific. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. And we look forward to uh, uh, catching up with you when these programs are going on. Thank you. Thanks. The Hiller boys and girls lacrosse seasons were a success, but have come to an end. Here's a look. Rushes in, shot deflected away, loose ball in front of the net, and the goaltender able to cover it up. Hiller's had a big opportunity there, but it was quite a save by Maggie Roberts. Now Lydia Rudden going to pick up a loose ball and fire one in to put the Hillers up three to two. Hiller girls lacrosse earned the seventh seed in the East Division I bracket and battled 10th seeded Bishop Fian in the first round. Lydia Rudden netted several goals in the game to help lead the Hillers to a 12-8 victory. The Hopkinton Hillers fell in the next round to second seeded Franklin by a final score of 11-9. The Hillers ended their terrific season with 13 wins and 7 losses. Zach Frank over to Connor Sullivan. Now Owen McDonald back to Luke, wrapping it around, trying to open it up in front of the net. Hiller 
Rivers being patient. Connor Sullivan rushing in, and he will put another one in. Connor Sullivan makes it 11 to nine, Hillers. Hiller Boys Lacrosse earned the third seed in the Central East Division II bracket and battled Wayland in the first round. Connor Sullivan contributed six goals, and Dylan McBride had five of his own in the 21 to 13 victory. It was an eight to eight game at the half, but the Hillers dominated in the second half, outscoring Wayland 13 to five. The Hillers fell on the road in the next round to second-seeded Concord Carlisle by a final score of 12-7. The Hillers ended their great season with 14 wins and 6 losses. Coming up next, we have the latest on Hiller baseball, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. A whole lot more ahead. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. This week on Frank and Mary in Hartford, Arthur and Amy sit down with Principal Assessor John Neese and talks about tax relief procedures. will be, I suppose it depends on how many applications there are. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's, um, it's a program for Hopkinton to be proud of. There is a pending legislation um, at the State House right now to make this um, um, statewide. But whether that will pass or not, I don't know. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller Baseball had a pair of playoff games this past week. Here's a look at what happened. On Monday, June 10th, first-seeded Hiller's baseball took on nine-seeded Milton in the South Division II sectional quarterfinals. Hiller's trailed one to nothing into the bottom of the first, but that did not last long. Right up and a pitch to the left. He gets a piece of this one, and it's past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in. Here comes Simos. He'll score as well. It's a two-RBI single for Connor Kelly. He absolutely roped that ball into the outfield. Scalded, I'd say. Fossey was a few inches too short on that one. Dexter with the pitch, and this is hit in the air, high in the air, to the wall. Adios! Home run, Brendan Kelly! It's 4-1, to one, Hillers. Big fly. Hillers added another run in the bottom of the third. Dexter set to deliver. And this is hit up the middle. That'll get into left field. Here comes Simos around to score. And it's an RBI single for Sheamus. And the Hillers have a 5-1 to one lead. Top of the fourth, Ronnie Sheamus made a tremendous play at third base. As this is hit in the air, what a play by Sheamus. Jumps up and rips it down for out number one. Just like Snagglepuss. Well, here's your defensive play of the day so far. Milton plated two runs in the top of the sixth to make it a 5-3 to three game, but the Hillers' bats exploded in the bottom of the inning. Simos tattoos this ball over to the wall, and that is going to drop in fair territory. One run is in, a second run is in, and here comes McKenzie as well, and it's a three RBI double for Steve Simos. Eight look, to three Hillers. Good fastball hitter that kid. <laughs> really good fastball hitter. Big mistake pitch. And this is a fair ball. Simos is going to score. Throw to first. Not in time. Everybody's safe. That was certainly the most awkwardly hit ball of the day, but in any case, it does the trick. Simos scores. It's nine to three Hillers. An RBI single for Ronnie Sheamus. Down low, that'll get by the catcher, and here comes another run for the Hillers. Ambrosoni will score. Seven runs came around in the bottom of the sixth, and the Hillers took the 12-3 victory to advance on to the sectional semifinals. Brendan Kelly pitched six solid innings in the game, giving up two runs and striking out five. Connor Kelly closed out the seventh and went two for four at the plate, with three RBIs and scored two runs. Last year we lost on a heartbreaker up on the top field here and 
It just feels good to finally get one back under our belt. Uh, yeah, it feels awesome, you know, especially watching the seniors uh, struggle last year with a first round knockout, you know, it was good to uh, help them get to the next round. Those uh, Milton hitters certainly uh, challenged you at times, uh, but you got through, especially the middle innings, uh, pretty well. Uh, how was it out there against this uh, tough Milton team? Each one of them battled up at the plate. They all were up close on the plate and were swinging at my pitches. They were being aggressive. Made me work for my, made me work for it. So. And how did it feel to hit that uh, two-run homer in the bottom of the first to make it a uh, four to nothing or four to one game at that time? It felt really good. Uh, I just saw it, saw it down and sent it as far as I could. All right, and uh, Connor, you came in, closed things out, but you also had a good day at the plate. You went uh, two for four. Uh, how did it feel to have the success that you had at the plate today? How did you feel uh, closing it out as well for the win to advance to the uh, semifinals? Uh, I felt great at the plate. You know, I was really locked in all week. I was really excited for the game. And uh, well, we're closing it out. Uh, we had a 12-3 cushion, so I just knew how to go out and throw strikes. And our defense has been solid all week, so I had confidence. Steve, you had a great game today. You went... Uh, two for three at the plate with a walk, three runs scored, and you also uh, defensively caught a guy stealing. Uh, How would you feel about your performance out there today? Felt good. Um, Brendan made it really easy, so I love catching him. I'm going to miss playing with him next year, so felt what, good. What's it been like playing with this group all season? Oh, it's been awesome. we got a great group. Um, some of my best friends are on this team, and, and even the younger guys, they're, they're just like family now, so it's been great. Excellent. And um, th that Milton team, they gave you a little bit of a scare in the end, but of course you had that seven-run explosion in the bottom of the sixth. Uh, what was the general feeling when you guys just uh, seemed to not stop hitting the ball in that bottom of the sixth inning? Yeah, it feels good. It makes you feel good about what you have to come. So uh, next game, if we can hit like that, hopefully we'll come out on top again. But I guess we, we just got to play one game at a time. We're with head coach Steve Simos. Coach, a great win against a tough Milton team today. The bats uh, really got going, especially in that bottom of the sixth inning. How would you feel about your team's performance out there today? I loved it. I thought uh, we had a great practice last night. We've been a good hitting team, but they've really committed to having a plan. I had seen Milton play uh, last week against the defending state champs, and um, I could not be more uh, pleased with how we performed today. And um, Brendan Kelly, I promised the kids that Brendan Kelly would be great because he's been great since he's been here, and he was great. And so I'm really proud of him. Can you talk about uh, the performance of Steve Simos, not only getting a couple big hits, but also uh, that great defensive play to catch the guy stealing? Yeah, I uh, I told him it's you know these are the games where he has to do something. He's had a very good year. I'm very proud of him, obviously. And uh, but that last at bat when he knew. We really needed it to unlock the game. I was really happy with his approach. You know, he's he's harder on himself than uh, I ever am, and and I'm pretty hard on him. Um, but he really battled, and I was really proud of him. All right, coach, you're moving on to take on the winner of Stoughton and Milford in a very tough bracket. Uh, and this team just uh, they, they really seem like they can compete with just about anybody. Uh, what's it been like to coach this group this year? Great. You know, I was saying. Um, to my assistant coaches, who um, I said they're they're special, but they're not you're not excuse me they're not uniquely special. We have unbelievable kids in this town, uh, and this group is great to have 21 kids on our roster, and I don't get any negativity on the bench. We have a wonderful bench, wonderful teammates. It's uh, 21 deep, just great. The first seeded Hopkinton Hillers baseball team battled fifth seeded Stoughton. The Hillers were the home team at the neutral site location of Stoughton High School. Top of the second, Stoughton threatened a bit, but Fisher's pickoff move was too much to handle. Josh has got a good pickoff move. We'll check in, and he picked him off. Throw to second, and now the throw back to first, and they got the tag. I just got. Uh done saying he's got a good pickoff move over there and what happened? There you go, Nazaro picked off a great throw by Fisher. Right up in the pitch. Or actually he's gonna pick him off again. Throw to second. McKenzie is gonna go back to Kelly. The tag got him! Two pickoffs here in the second inning. And that'll wrap up the top of the second. What a move by Josh Fisher. Two pickoffs for Fisher to get out of the inning. Bottom of the fourth, the Hillers got the scoring started.
And this is going to be a fair ball up the left side. The throw to first is in time, but the Hillers will score a run. A sacrifice, RBI ground out for Brandon Kelly. Ronnie Sheamus coming around to score. Up to third is Connor Kelly. Lined up in the pitch. And this is up the right side and bobbled by the second baseman. Picks it up, throws the first, gets the out at first, but a run scores. Connor Kelly comes around to make it a two to nothing game. A sacrifice RBI ground out for Cole Glassburn. The Cardinal, Cole Glassburn. A two nothing lead for the Hillers heading to the top of the fifth and a great defensive play got Fisher and the Hillers out of the inning unscathed. This is hit in the air, foul territory, and it is caught! Went off of Brennan Kelly, and Josh Fisher is able to make the catch. Score that what? Kelly with the assist, Fisher with the out. Three to one. <laughs> that oh. is out number three, a three to one fly out. <laughs> Unbelievable. Things are going right, things are going right. It was a two to nothing Hillers lead heading to the bottom of the fifth and then it was rally time. Right up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one, and that is over to left field. That'll drop in. Here comes Simos, and another runner right behind him. Ambrosoni will score as well. Throw to second, Sheamus is safe. An RB, a two RBI single for Sheamus, and he advances to second on the throw in. And this is ripped into right field. That'll get down. Sheamus being waved around third. Here he comes, and he will score. Five nothing Hillers, an RBI single for Connor Kelly. And this is hit in the air. Over to right field, to the fence. That'll drop in for a hit. Connor Kelly being waved around third. Here he comes, and he will score to make it a six to nothing game. It's an RBI triple for Brendan Kelly. Didn't even have to slide, oh my. Pitch. And this is hit in the air, over to right field, could be trouble, and it is going to drop in between four fielders. Brendan Kelly's gonna tag and he will score, and it's going to be a seven to nothing game. And he got hit, that's going to score a run. Six runs score in the inning to make it eight to nothing Hillers. Top of the sixth, Stoughton with no outs and a man on, but Steve Simos would help clear the bases. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to second for one, now the throw to first. It's going to briefly get away from Kelly, and now it's picked up by Simos, the runner trying to go to second, the throw over, they got him! They double him up anyway! That's hustle, 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 baseball, Stevie Simos running up the first baseline from his catcher's position, picks the ball up, they got by Kelly, and throws the runner out. In the bottom of the sixth, the Hillers added even more security. Line up in the pitch. And this is driven into right field. That'll get down for a base hit. Sheamus around third, he's gonna try to score. The throw in is not gonna be in time. It's a nine nothing Hillers lead. An RBI single for Connor Kelly. His third of the day. As this is driven over to center field, way back, and it's past the center fielder. One run, one run is in, here comes another run. Pagliuca coming around, McKenzie heading to third, and it's a two RBI triple for Ben McKenzie. 11-0 Hillers. And he'll drive this one over to right field. This is going to be big trouble. Down it goes, McKenzie will score, and Simos rounding second. Heading over to third, and that is going to be an RBI double for Simos. The umpire says go back to second. It's a ground rule double for Stevie Simos. The Hillers take the win over Stoughton by a final of 12 to one. Josh Fisher was terrific on the hill, pitching six scoreless innings and striking out seven hitters. Ronnie Sheamus had a good day at the plate. He went two for two and scored three runs. Sheamus had a 1,000 on base percentage in the game as he also was walked and hit by a pitch. Ben McKenzie was also a force to be reckoned with, going two for five at the plate. 
with a double and a triple. He drove in a pair of runs and scored one. The Hillers advance to the sectional finals to battle Westwood. The game will take place Saturday, June 15th at Campanelli Field in Brockton at 10.30 a.m. first pitch. Tom Nappy here with Josh Fisher and Steve Simos. Today's battery combination, the Hillers victorious over Stoughton 12-1. to Josh, you pitched a tremendous game out there. Uh, how did it feel? Uh, competing in this sectional semifinals game as a sophomore and having a performance like that, six shutout innings, unbelievable. Uh, well, obviously it's a bit nerve-wracking when I first start, but as soon as I threw the first pitch, uh, I felt locked in. Uh, with Stevie catching, I'm always comfortable. And, um, and the first thing I did when I found out that I was pitching is that um, I watched um, Brendan Kelly pitch against Greater New Bedford when he was a sophomore since he was in the same exact situation as I was, and that gave me confidence. Absolutely, and Stevie, you had a great performance out there, and you made a, one of the most tremendous defensive plays I think I've ever seen where you backed up the first baseman on that overthrow and ended up getting uh, the runner out at second for the double play. Uh, obviously, uh, you know what to do in just about any situation, but... Uh, how did it feel just to make that tremendous play that you rarely ever see in any baseball game? Yeah, I felt good. I thought it was going to be a double play, but uh, we are, we're always taught to back up, so that's what I did. I got lucky with the ball, and he decided to go to second, so our guys are there, and we were able to throw him out. So it was what it was the result we wanted, but in a different way. So we were planning on a double play, but we got it anyway. So, and Josh, you're a sophomore, and you have uh, – Many more good years to come here as part of this Hillers team. What's it been like to play with this group this season? This group is like family. It, it, this is like the closest I've ever felt with like brothers. It, it, we, we are literally brothers. I trust every single player on this team. Everybody is great. The defense is fantastic. The pitching is fantastic. And our hitting is fantastic. So everything we have is fantastic. And it's just brothers playing baseball. Absolutely. And Steve, this is the first time in your high school career going to the sectional finals. How does it feel to get to that level as a senior especially? Feels great. Yeah, we've been waiting a long time to get here, so we're just excited to play. Coach, you're going to the sectional finals. How does it feel to get to that level, especially this season? Uh, feels great. I've been together with these seniors since they were little kids, obviously, because my son is a senior. and. Uh, they're a, such a special group character-wise. Um, they showed that again today, kept an even keel and pretty adverse uh, circumstances, a hostile environment in terms of um, the fans and things like that, and they were just awesome. They're just very businesslike, respectful character kids. And Josh Fisher was absolutely tremendous out there on the mound. Can you talk about his performance? I don't want to. I don't want to brag about him because I don't want his head to get big. Uh, but he's he's special because he has a beautiful makeup for a pitcher. Um, he's blessed with a very good arm, but he knows how to pitch. He knows how to keep his composure. He's a, a real competitor, and he's a wonderful, wonderful kid. He's he's a funny dude. Um, couldn't be happier for him. And I I know you uh, don't want to give your uh, son too much credit, but. What was running through your head when you saw that tremendous double play that he made? That was unbelievable where he backed up the first baseman through the runner out going to second. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. He's the catcher, so he's supposed to do that. So that wasn't that much of a play. Unfortunately, his at-bat was the only one. They said he hit the ball well to right field, but I, the only at-bat of the game I didn't see because I was talking to Josh. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm ha he does. He did his job. That's, that's, um, that's what he's supposed to do. He's a captain and a senior and a catcher. And your offense really came alive today. Can you just talk about uh, how the bats got going today? Yeah, we have a um, we have a little expression that we had lately that uh, our seven will come if they stay with their plan because they really have a good mindset at the plate. They're, they're, they have ability, but they have a good mindset. And most of hitting is about approach uh, and the belief that our seven will come. That will our big inning is what we mean by that. And the last two days we've had that big inning, and that that's really disheartening for another team. Hey, Coach, I've heard that you got Westwood in the sectional finals. Uh, can you talk about your upcoming opponent? Really interesting. Um, I think they're extremely well coached. He's a really good guy. Uh, but what's very funny about it is probably the two worst baseball games I've ever seen are games against Westwood. We were horrible, and they beat us, and they were horrible, 
and we were equally horrible and we beat them. So both teams, I think, think the other team stinks. Uh, and both teams are talented, so it's really interesting. I, I have a feeling both teams will play uh, really well, and it'll be a low-scoring, well-played game. Um, but it is funny. Those were our two most horrific games for both teams. <laughs> I think their coach would agree. So we're looking forward to it. It should certainly be interesting this weekend. Coach, congratulations on reaching the sectional finals. Thank you. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, June 14th at 5 p.m., local poets and musicians gather to perform on a new open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, June 17th at 6.30 p.m., 8th graders celebrate their completion of middle school at the 8th grade promotional ceremonies, live on HCAM Ed. And at 7 p.m., the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, June 18th at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hiller Softball vs. Milton and the Hopkinton Music in Our School Summer Concert Series will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Go Hillers!